the Air Force for the F-35. You wonder somebody might nuke it if they were going to have a war? Yeah, well, that would be... you are to the impact zone of a nuclear war. You know, yeah, I mean, that... But the easiest it'll be on you... Is just to get fried. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, well, and I'm a fat kid. Country, I don't even run from the police. The <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah I guess. Uh, my my personal opinion is is uh, is uh, I've got I've got guns. Yeah, I've got Same guns. Here. I've got a closet full of guns. Yeah. There, anyway, there and go. I got a bug out bag with two guns in it, but they're nothing special. They're just one's an AR seven or, or an AR five, if you know what that is. It's yeah. a it's a 22, semi-automatic 22 that everything screws apart and goes into the stock. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, is that the one true. that was made by Feather Industries? Yes. An AT-22. Well, it's actually an Armalite 5, but Featherlite copied it. Okay. Uh, I, say the, the I know best. what that one is. My dad used it, and he was a flight surgeon in the Air Force, and he used it when he had to attend the B-52 crews on their cross countries, which went to somewhere in the Bering Sea. <laughs> Jesus, that is like one of the best grouse hunting rifles I've ever owned in my entire life. That's I, keep a, I keep a 303 handy for hunting. And oh, you they, keep uh, an Enfield? Yeah. I had one, but I gave it to my son. Oh, that thing's got a, it's it's a left-handed scope, because I'm a left-handed shooter when it comes to a rifle. And I keep a uh, CZ-90 for CZ-85 combat in my bag. So. I carry a 6-inch three fifty seven seven shot revolver on my hip. Yeah, I don't think, you know, three fifty seven is too much. It's just too much. That is a yeah. big hand cannon. Well, they, they say the, the secret to survival of that situation is is uh, the you know most people go to scavenging and then they go try to hunt or fish or whatever you should uh, you should skip the scavenging and start and, with the hunting and the fishing and immediately start hunting fishing and preserving and 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 then uh, let 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 things settle out however they may yes and then I come also, back around I also have trapping equipment in my bug out bag yeah copper wire for rabbits you name it well I, I i actually bought i bought one so it's not copper but i just keep all the necessary things i travel light so man you know the best thing you can get if for a survival thing and now yes. this is this is strictly for survival purposes you know this is not shit you do is is get a trot line and look, yeah, and I've you got don't it. have to have water to catch shit on a trout line. You put that nope. shit about a foot above the ground with fucking corn on it, you catch turkeys all fucking day long. It's illegal, you're poaching, what the fuck ever, but, you know, if law if breaks... So well, if you're in that kind of situation, I don't yeah. think the government's gonna do much to you, because they're technically yeah. defunct. <laughs> I also carry a twenty two pistol, but it's, I normally keep it in my bug out bag, along with the twenty two rifle. I would love so my my dad growing up he had a 22 Magnum uh, Peacemaker re replica. I and do too. I would love to get another one of those, and I could buy them dime a dozen. Can't get ammo for them. Nobody's got ammo. Trying to find 22 ammo here 
is like two Magnum ammo is hard to get. Well, any twenty two, like like you go anywhere and they're sold out. And I was like, well, okay, well, I guess the twenty two's out. Well, seeing as I got six thousand rounds, I'm not too worried for a little while. I, I keep a fuck match twenty two candy as well. That's my. Uh, I did. I did find my my favorite pistol of all time is a. a 1858 Remington New Army conversion. Yeah. And I found um uh, a 38 uh caliber. And uh but holy shit those are expensive. <laughs> like are you kidding my me? God, I, have expensive. A, uh, I have a 1902 Swedish Mauser that shoots 6.5 rounds. I have to save all my brass and reload. I can't Yeah, try right. finding that's 6.5, right. right? Yeah. Um I had an original 1862 Colt from the Civil War, all matching serial numbers. Mm. But when I moved out here, I let my son have it. Ugh. Yeah. What a, what a and, an 18, and an 1873 uh, Springfield in 4570. But I replaced, I replaced that with a modern 4570 for big game. Yeah, that that Remington also comes in forty five ACP, and I mean forty five ACP isn't too bad. It's not like the three fifty seven where every time you fire it, you're going to break your wrist. Practically, well, actually, but... they've got modern forty fives. I mean forty five Colt long Colt that's mm -hmm. more power than more powerful than a three fifty seven. Yeah, I don't worry about it. Nine millimeters always going to be good for me. I don't need anything more, or anything less. Two in the head, two in the chest. Psh doesn't matter how... I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, but you're from for, Canada. For Everything's defense, metric. <laughs> for home defense, I have custom loaded for my 3-inch three 357 the equivalent of 9 millimeter ammunition. It's got 125 grain leads, lead bullets, and it's metered for 1,100 feet per second, which is almost exactly a 9 millimeter. No sound will make somebody leave your house like the pumping of a shotgun. Oh, that's, uh, I, don't, I don't give a that's, shit. I, don't I got one of those, right. too. Right. I, got I, one I don't give a shit too. what you're wearing or how armored up you think you are. Uh, <laughs> you know, that shotgun's going to fucking hurt inside the house. You're not getting out of the fucking hallway in time. It's going to go through the sheetrock. Uh, yeah. Actually, I Good don't have sheetrock. I think my You're walls done. my walls are concrete, I think. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about a house made in the desert in nineteen sixty two. Yep. The, the house is brick. It's it could be plaster. Brick. It's it's yeah. Well, uh, plaster it, has a real two concrete layers of brick. feel to it. I mean, yeah. the outside walls yeah. are two layers. an outside layer of bricks and an inline side layer of bricks right. and they're well, plaster. Where Gabe is from and my wife, they're up they they come from Hermiston, Oregon. A lot of the houses there, the older houses, were made the the walls were actually put together using a combination of cinder blocks and empty ammo canisters filled with uh concrete because there's a military base right there. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of that house that was housing for for the military base. So. Uh, Interesting that <laughs> oh we'll just take this empty canister that used to hold fifty cal belts. We'll just fill that with some concrete and use that as the cornerstone of your wall. <laughs> like sure, whatever you know, repurpose. It works. Yeah, repurpose. Psh, I don't want okay. military in my house. You what? <laughs> <laughs> you you, you don't, don't want military in his house. Yeah, no. Not one bit. I already did my time. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> yeah. Were you were you in the Canadian forces? Yep. Since they're try since they're unified, what, what what did you have a specialty? Yep, right here. I think the there's my coin. Nice. Royal Canadian Navy. And I'll tell oh. you one thing, I've never been on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to swim. Did you do, did you do electronics <laughs> or something? Nope, 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 nope. I spend most of my time with um, uh, ground forces, actually. Were you uh, an observer? Nope. 
I was a trainer. Oh. Good time. I was too. I was a trainer in the Air Force. Yeah, I did my time overseas. I saw lots of fun things, saw amazing people. Uh, tried to kill them? I, no, no, I'm pretty sure they tried to kill me. Uh, they blew up my truck in, uh, in Sarajevo with the peacekeeping oh, corps there. That would be no fun. That was that pissed me off because I had a I had a truck and it broke down like every five k. I had to get out and fix that thing, and I finally got a new truck. We weren't even ten k away from our uh, FOB, and boom, they blew it up. I got hit with a mortar. Shit! Oh, that pissed me off. <laughs> damn! That really pissed me off, man. I didn't. I, I never never got another truck, but that really pissed me off. I don't care about the ringing in my ears, man. They blew up my fucking truck. I, I've <laughs> never been so goddamn mad in my entire life. <laughs> I could hear you hey, yelling hey. across the landscape. You son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah, I, I will notice that it's pretty cool that we're both celebrating the dark side today. You know? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, I got an ancient yeah. Star Wars shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to nuclear blast. The nuclear blast. Welcome to Deep Night Revelation. Uh, we'll yeah, be picking I, up where we left off last week. We're going to drop George in, I think, with Bocephus in the Star Town, while uh, Jack and uh, Randolph are on a hunting safari. And uh, so... <laughs> Somehow they, I've got the feeling that volunteering to do something dangerous beyond what's required is not a good idea well they they well, have safe. they have <laughs> you guys have done the the <laughs> the golden master rule of all uh tabletop role play you have split the party and uh so uh we're gonna juggle between your two uh separate scenes uh but before we do that we're going to thank a friend of the greenwater guild hall None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They're just products that we really like. And I'll tell you after the game about a traveler splitting the party, if you think this is bad. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Somebody did that last week. <laughs> so tonight we would like to think they're going to think a new company. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, this isn't a sponsorship or partnership, uh, but uh, really like Boston Scally Company. If you like well-made hats, I recommend checking out Boston Scally. They have, uh, like, the, if you go to their webpage, bostonscallyco.com um, <clears throat> or bostonscally.com, they are they have so many different hats and designs that if you're trying to pick one, it is going to be uh, you're, you're going to be there for a while because you're going to be torn on which one you want. Um, <clears throat> all of them are just excellent made hats. Uh, they do have a uh, a discount for uh, new purchasers. If you go and sign up for their newsletter for new products, they will give you a 10% discount on your next purchase. So definitely check out Boston Scally and uh, hope you like your new hat. Um, we do have some new shirts <coughs> available on our Greenwater merch store in the link down below. Uh, we have the Braunhaven uh, campaign shirt. We have, um, of course, the Wednesday Night Pirate Flag shirt and the uh, uh, core group, the Wayward Bastards, their shirt. Um, there is a blanket that comes in three sizes. Uh, we just actually sent uh, a one of our players is... Uh, just having, they're just about ready to pop with a baby. And uh, so we sent them the uh, small size blanket that has the map of the Gloucestian Empire on it as a baby blanket. But uh, yeah, check out the merch store. Um, buttons are the cheapest items on there. So anything that you purchase on that store goes directly back into the channel. Uh, go buy some buttons or or get a, get a t-shirt. They're not that bad. So uh, check them out. <coughs> And uh, speaking of the Braunhaven, uh, we there is a new book out, the Skellis Mountains. It has um, optional rules for uh, temperature or exterior temperature versus characters' personal temperature. It has new equipment, optional rules for what happens at zero hit points, <coughs> including a shattered shield rule, um, and as well as, of course, details on numerous locations, uh, major uh, points throughout the Skellis Mountains. So uh, it is available now on Drive-Thru RPG 
and uh, Big Geek Emporium uh, via PDF, and you can get print-on-demand uh, in a hardcover book uh, via drive through RPG as well. So, where we left off, <coughs> you guys had uh, decided uh, that, that... So, Randolph and Jack decided that they were going to go uh, to the... Um, they, they went on a safari hunt uh, because two-thirds of Corella is actually designated as a well it's not it's hard to say that it's called a wildlife preserve but that's really what it is um <clears throat> they have the government has designated two-thirds of this world uh be untouched by by urban growth and so uh there's really one one major capital city which is the star town of the downport and Corella sees, because of this, Corella sees a lot of, um, they see a lot of <clears throat> tourist attractions, uh, people coming to see the wildlife. There is a large, of course, outdoor contingent that shows up, um, whether it be hunting, fishing, mountain climbing, camping, hiking, what have you. And... Uh, and then, of course, they they have their their star town. Now, one of the things that uh, that these guys discovered when they went to uh, a dinner with the captain of of the uh, Wrath of God, the Acrux uh, class battle cruiser that met them when they came into the system, um, they discovered that the Corellan League has a program um, where they they use clones much as anybody else would use robots, and it is it, they admitted at that dinner that there are some you know bleeding heart activists that you know are against this that tr that clones should be treated better because they mm -hmm. use these clones for everything from ma uh, menial labor. Um, all the way to, oh, well, we'll just clone you, and in a couple of weeks, uh, you, you need that new heart, we'll just harvest it from your clone. You need that new liver, we'll just take it from your clone. And, uh, <clears throat> and so there's these activist groups that, uh, they kind of downplayed the activist thing, but um, there is a, uh, a contingent on the planet that is against this. This whole thing. And the weird thing about the clones is that Corella does have access to robots as well. Um, I mean, they're not, they're not in the Dark Ages. This is a tech level 13 planet. Um, but they, they have cloning technology. And Bocephus uh, basically petitioned the ambassador uh, the, at the uh, Imperial Embassy to um, get them a clone, get them cloning vats. Um, is what he asked for, um, because he thinks that that technology could be used on the Deep Knight mission. Now, of course, uh, the question really is, the ambassador out here doesn't really know a whole lot about your mission. He knew you guys were coming. That, that's about all he knows. Um, your, your real mission is kind of need-to-know basis, and so... Um, he you guys doesn't need to know. Yeah, maybe. You know, I don't know. Um, I mean, there could be a courier en route that will fill him in on it, but by the time he learns about it, it's going to be way too late. You guys are going to be gone. <laughs> and we'll have a cloning vat. Right. That. Yeah. Yes. 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 He has put in yeah. the requisition order. Yeah. Wonderful. So. Yeah. That thing in a deep freeze. <laughs> right. So we're going to start with the Corolla Star Town. And uh, oh, uh, we're gonna. I'm replace. not too impressed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I. Yeah. These look like wooden huts. Pretty much. Uh. Yeah. I apologize for that. Uh. Both of the mapping, actually, all three of the mapping programs I've got, only has fantasy assets. Uh. The one incarnate. Oh, we've got sci-fi assets that are coming. They're in beta right now. Like, okay, well, can you... I mean, how hard is it to draw a house? I mean, come on, guys. But, whatever. Um, so this is this is our map. Let me find... So I'm supposed to think these are better. Dungeon Fog has great sci-fi assets. 
It does. And actually, I believe this map came from Dungeon Fog. They have great sci-fi assets, but not um, not for small houses. For for it's it's great if you want to draw like the interior of like a, a base or something. But if you want to zoom out and make a small town or city, their their housing options are not that great. Um, and there's other things about Dungeon Fog that seems really, really clunky uh, compared to things like Incarnate or um, even uh, Dungeon Scrawl. So, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm going to be real honest. Their commercial license is outrageously overpriced, but whatever. It is what it is. I paid, you know. <laughs> so I got until about October until I can find something better. That That's where I'm at. So, you guys are uh, wandering around <clears throat> the... Uh... Oh, that was one of the other things that... So Bocephus is looking for something female. Yes, Bocephus, the, the randy dolphin, is uh, uh, basically running around dry humping everything that he finds. But um, one of the other things that, that came up <clears throat> was that uh, you guys met an alien race called the Chemli, and they have a very odd um, life cycle. Yeah, they have a very odd life cycle. This is what the Chemli look like. And you had run into uh, one that was nearing the end of its life. And so essentially these things emerge from um, their, their egg and live for about between two to six years before they change into the picture before you. And then they go through their life and they basically have the average intelligence of like a human or like a Varger. And um, they live around 50 years. And when they start reaching that top end, or towards that top end, they they have many hormonal changes in their body, and they they get this urge to change yet again. And their society, of course, has developed medicine and uh, blockers and things of that nature to prevent that. And but sooner or later, even with the medicine, it's too much, and they decide, all right, well, it's time to give up the ghost, and they go and they make a cocoon. And then they emerge as these giant butterflies about two weeks later um, that don't eat. And they all they do is lay eggs. And then they starve to death and die. And then the eggs hatch and there are more chemli. And the, the one that they, that they encountered um, was actually the uh, ambassador that was sent. So the, the time period that you guys have arrived is during when all of the Corellan League sends their representatives to Corella, uh, to the orbital habitat, to basically hammer out laws and, and you know, do government. And uh, um, they probably aren't going to default on their, their loans and uh, will pass, you know, raising the debt ceiling, things of that nature. And he, this is his last time, because he came to Corella, and he is in a national park now, and he is going to go cocoon himself and become a butterfly. Pretty, pretty butterfly. And uh, so you guys kind of moved on from that, and uh, George and Bocephus are wandering around. Now, I know that Sarda wanted to check out museums. He had said something uh, to the, along the lines that he was going to ask, like, the security guards or the janitors, or whatever, where are the good places to eat? Where's the great place that you go after work to go get a drink? He's not going to ask, you know, the the concierge at the hotel, because they're going to get a kickback. And so he's going to ask the working man, where do you go to eat? Where do you go for entertainment? Things of that nature. Uh, but, Sivas, what were you... I know that you had a plan of stuff that you wanted to wander around the town to look for. I mean, well, I, I think it's important to get some uh, R and R, and and enjoy myself a little bit. Uh, but uh, you know, I would like to like to poke around and and you know find out if there's any psionic 
uh, you know, groups or, or anything here, here locally, uh, and need to, need to find out if they've had any contact with the fungal people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the fungal people. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, you know what I mean. The entity. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. And the, George, you like to try to get George in trouble. Yeah. yeah I'm, just, I'm just there to protect Bocephus. Okay. Because really, he's my doctor, and I get banged up a lot, so I'm just there to protect my 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 doctor. Okay. okay. And of course, I you know want to make sure that if there's any fungal people around, they can taste my flame rifle. That's really what I'm there for. Yeah. That that sounds I'm a guy. doable. I'm the bodyguard. Oh yeah, I'll make sure you're needed. Yep, yeah, I'm just going to make sure that I think I keep my my eyes on a my eyes open, my head on a swivel. So you guys end up following Sarder around uh, the town, and there are this being the uh, this isn't the believe it or not this isn't really the original capital of the Corellan League. The original capital of the Corellan League was actually Gar... Uh, yes, Gar, the planet that you found the... Um, monument. The monument, right. And it wasn't named Gar. It was named Tatiana. And um, it was originally the capital. And they have like a the old orbital habitat capital floating around Gar um, that they've turned into a museum, but everybody has told you it's a good thing you just bypass that because it's really not that great. Um, it's kind of run down, and uh, you're you're doing a much better job just coming to Corella, and um, and so Bocephus, or I'm sorry, um, Sarda has actually done a fairly good job of dragging you guys through a number of different uh, museums and. <clears throat> Um, historical, um, you know, going around seeing the historical sites. It's kind of like going to, like, the Hudson's Bay Company or, the, you know, Fort Vancouver where you, you, you're just wandering around reading plaques. <laughs> Maybe some holographic recreations of what they think life might have been like. So the thing to keep in mind about Corella is that this this planet has been occupied for 2,700 years. And uh, it was originally occupied by what they called the Sindalian diaspora, uh, diaspora, diaspora, um, which basically means that there were all these uh, Sindalians, mostly nobles, who during the uh, Sindalian uh, revolution or rebellion um, in the Trojan Reach, um, when that was going on 2,000 years ago, they actually before 2,000 years ago, they basically said, um, screw this, we're out, and they left the emperor and his uh, despotism to do what he will, and they came here. And uh, so a lot of the the things that you are finding are uh, quite interesting. And I will allow Bocephus and George to both make a Recon Plus Intellect check. Oh, I got this. All right, then. I hope so. I've got Recon 1, and an Intellect will give me plus 1. I got a plus 2, so... I'm starting off hot here, so... suck. Okay... Intellect plus two, recon three. That would give me a fifteen. Wow. Okay. So fives. As you guys are bopping around a museum, uh, in fact, it is uh, this museum right here. Um, you, they special. This particular museum specializes in uh, basically holographic uh, recreations of. You know what life may have been like when the Sindalians first came to Corella and things of that nature, and there is one section that has some speculation on um, how some of these families may have arrived here, and 
um, there is some strange notes about how some of the these ships that were only you know capable of jump two or jump three were able to get here um, in the process of like two weeks from the Trojan Reach. I mean, you guys have what jump four, and you're not even ca capable of that. And so uh, there has been they these are are kind of myths and legends from so long ago. But one theory posits, and there, and this is near the Alt Altarian, uh, Altarian. Let me see if I'm saying that right. Now, oh, accelerated travel want. would be something we'd be very interested in. Actually, I mean, that could cut years off our time. Decades. So the Alt. The just outside uh, Rimward of the Altar Altarian Confederation, which is Rimward of where you guys are at, there is an area called uh, uh, the Helix Nebula. And there are um, varying reports of ships coming out of the Helix Nebula um, and then jumping towards Corella and uh, founding the Corellan League. Now, of course, none of this information can be corroborated. There, it's, it's all conjecture, but um, there are old stories that say, oh, well, we left, we left the Trojan Reach and then exited the Helix Nebula. And it's like, well, how, how did that happen? Uh, it sounds like wormholes or something. That, I mean, just weird science. Uh but because George found this so quickly and easily and probably pointed it out, I will allow um, either of you, if you have any uh, science history, science history plus intellect or education check. <laughs> I don't have I don't have any of the I mean, I guess I'd have a zero in any science. Right. Yeah. So I, I'll get a zero in that and then. And then I'll I'll get a one, so this will be just plus one. But it is something, unless George. No, no. You're not really a science guy, are you, George? No. Yeah, I'm not either today. I'm <laughs> just saying, you know. So yeah, I mean, as far as is reading that or you know watching this, um, this tale on the hologram and. He's kind of like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah, this is stupid. This is, this is a dumb story. Um, one piece of information that you do got, that you do know, though, and, and you would know this with a six, is that uh, the Jodani Consulate, um, which, truth be told, is closer here than it was there, um, the Jodani Consulate did do a series of explorations specifically of the Helix Nebula. I do want to research the Helix Nebula better. Okay. So, I, mean, I don't necessarily know if I can do that here or not. Uh, I don't know that you would get any better information here. than You would probably have a better time doing it on your ship. All right. Then that's the Helix Nebula is something to check out when we get back upon the ship. Yeah, most definitely. So, Sarda is successful in finding, um, you know, as you guys are in this museum, he kind of uh, nudges up to a, <clears throat> I, I guess you could call him a security guard. Uh, a, 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 he's <laughs> more of a paid witness kind of person. And, um, and started is like, well, you know, we're we're tourists, and we'd kind of like to know, you know, where would you go after you got off work if you wanted to, you know, get a beer and some good food? And he rambles off a number of places, and one of them is a local nightclub. And but the security guard does does say that uh, he goes, I'm going to be real honest with you, it is known as a clone hangout. So, 
if you if you are racist against clones then that might not be the place for you. And there's a lot of people like that, and I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just telling you that a lot of clones hang out there, but they have the best food. Like, their are, their burgers are, are fantastic. Are clones really a race, though? I mean, yeah, I... Yeah, no, I mean... I mean, I mean so if, I, if I cloned a monkey, you know... If you're a clonist, uh, how's that? You're, you're one of the ists if you're a clonist. Yeah, colonist... <laughs> I don't know. Just pondering. That's all. I was, you know. Vasivas needs to make a, a female dolphin. Well, you know, and clones freak me out. So, but that's okay. <laughs> oh well, and and the way I described them. Uh, so, and I don't know, you, Jeff. You might, uh, you might remember this. You remember the the old what 1978 Battlestar Galactica, the classic Battlestar Galactica? Do you remember the uh, <laughs> the episode I Station Zero where they met the Theta class clones and they were they were all dressed in like the same colored coveralls with the orange stripe down the side and they all had those ridiculously stupid hats? Yeah, that, I remember. That's exactly how these guys are dressed. And of course, they're all blonde. All the men have big, ridiculous, bushy beards. And then all, you know, oh, all the boy. women are blue-eyed, blonde-haired, perky tits. They're great, um, but they're all they all look the same. Well, he just will be happy. <laughs> hey, all right. Well, you know, is it still a threesome if two of them are a clone? <laughs> I'm just asking the question. I guess that would be how they <laughs> identify. <laughs> you have to ask that afterward, Joe. You don't want to ask. You don't want to ruin the mood with those questions on the front end. Is that a threesome or is it just a forearm uh, hand job? I mean, <laughs> and, then, and then you know, if they are genetically identical, except for one of them has you know a disease, you know, then you know that that really complicates things. Are they truly the same though? If one of them is diseased, well, don't forget, dolphins can pass gonorrhea. We can. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we think it's funny when we do. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> so, so yeah, Sarda, Sarda finds this, this club, and, he's like, and, and the security guard is adamant. It has some of the best burgers uh, that you can get, and uh, they're, they're good priced. But, you know, if you're, if you're anti-clone, you may not want to... To hang out there. So but. they pay the clones so they can buy food? The clones are given a stipend, yeah. yeah I don't want to call really it a wage. It's to, it's yeah. a monthly stipend, yeah. I, I, I don't really care so much about trying to try to change the world or its politics. I you know not in three well, days. Yeah, really. I'm just more wanting to try to have a good time and gather some information. And so, I mean, if these clones are cloning and hanging out here doing their thing, who am I to say they can't do it? You know, if if I could give them a DNA sample or two, well, that'll be fine. <laughs> so, you guys, this this is the building where the museum was. They tell you that uh, the. Uh, nightclub is actually over here and as you step out you see that there are a number of uh, of uh, activists are out there with their little you know their picket signs and, and their skittles colored hair and they're like yelling you know that we need to stop cloning and clones deserve equal rights and yada yada and they're just kind of picketing around this nightclub and you see that there's a number of clones that are that just push their way through and go in and of course you know the actors are like oh yeah no no please go inside and they're no oh, we need to stop cloning and um and so you see that going on around this building what do you think george think it's all right we'll just go in there and have us a cup of tea and maybe some Crumpets. <laughs> Just gonna say your tea and crumpets. Hundred <laughs> percent. You need to have. Uh, I think it's okay. You need to have some cucumber sandwiches. Yeah, I'll just. We'll just go ahead and head on in there. Okay. Yeah, I have absolutely zero. I can pass the picket line. Doesn't bug me one bit. Yeah. Well, I'm not even gonna engage the activists. Just gonna 
He's on so three. I need both of you to make two rolls. The first roll is uh, make a um, your choice, either recon intellect, or you can make a streetwise plus intellect check. Well, I have to go with recon. My streetwise is two, but my recon's three. So, oh, killing it. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> so George, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really good at one thing, right? Yes, yeah. noticing Rolling fives and sixes. That's it. Well, That's I mean, it. you know, well, and you're pretty good at investigate, right? I mean, uh, for... only because I have a chip. I only actually have a one in investigate. <laughs> you're an ex cop that has a shitty investigate score. Oh well, no! I'm just, just the driver. Yeah, you're just I the just driver, drive, right? Yeah, I'm just, I just drove people from one point to the other. Um, That's all so, I did. I'm a prisoner exchange officer. So, both of you uh, see a clone as you're crossing the street. Both of you see a clone, and he stops and he talks to some of the activists. George notices that this clone seems to have a uh, bulkier build than all of the other male clones that you've seen. Either this guy has eaten at this place a lot, or there's something under his coveralls. And he goes in, and Bocephus, you also see this, notice this, but you don't really notice much about the clone going inside. And as you are, you guys get to about here, and George, I need you to make a um well it's going to be a routine so uh six plus athletics dexterity check or just a straight dex check you want to get six or better but see if it's because you didn't notice this you have to make a Jeez. athletics dexterity check that's average at eight plus or just a standard dex check and get eight or better <laughs> 11 sweet that's just straight dexterity though that's not an athletics check okay because i don't have anything in athletics so so george did so, so could well be, could be an eight yeah jo george did so well um you see you kind of uh almost like you have a sixth sense about Shit's about to go down. Yeah, I will pull that doctor out of the way. I will allow you to. He, that guy's got a bulky bomb. <laughs> yeah, you can grab Bocephus <laughs> and move five meters in any direction you want to go. Yeah, straight back out of the uh, out of the way. So we'll uh, if, he's, if he's pulling me and moving me back out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and extend my extender shield. That's a good idea. Right there. Okay. All right, yeah. Uh. So George grabs Bocephus kind of by the fin and <laughs> yanks him back and drags him five meters away. And Bocephus pops his extendable shield just as a big... Ex and these... The other thing that you notice is these activists all move away. And this and this, this clone this goes clone inside. Goes inside. And I have something have for something. this. Ah, there, ah, we go. there we go. Fire! Fire! So, so much, much for good, good dinner. dinner. <laughs> yeah, so you, you see... You tell me they blew up my food? Yes, you yes. see a explosion. Well, die like the guys who blew up my truck. You see an explosion <laughs> come out of this doorway. Um, your guess is, uh, or George, your guess is that this, whatever this clone uh, had under his... Uh, Coveralls was explosive. He, he was probably wearing a bomb vest of some kind. And the street is, you know, covered in smoke, and uh, it is Armageddon. 
And you see people running and screaming all over the place, and there are screams of the dying and wounded. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Huh. <laughs> Leaving you hanging. Meanwhile... George, George has got to put in his repro for another truck. You know, I see that I see Gabriel's logged in, but I, I haven't confirmed. You you are with us, right, Gabe? Oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Just one. <laughs> sorry, I I was assuming, and I didn't want to make an ass out of well me. So, um, so there you are. Oh, and there's your text. Uh, said it is strong enough to knock down a grown man for about two hours. A psychedelic strong enough to last ninety percent of our hunting trip on a single dose. <laughs> So are the psychedelics for you? <laughs> I need two doses. You need two doses. So both hey, of you are going to trip balls. <laughs> hey, if you were wanting all that before you left, I'm sure I would have had something yeah, like I'm, that on I, hand. I, I'm give sure. Um, well, let's go to the handy dandy. Under recreational drugs. There. I mean, I... I, you know, as the ship's counselor, I fully support recreational drug use. I, I'm sure you do. Um, I would think that. Yeah. You know, I would think that uh, sedatives. Hmm. Sedatives would pro. Oh. oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, I would say that they just fall under uh, um, "quote unquote" medicinal drugs. I mean, yeah. I mean, shit. We yeah. we have Benadryl, so. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, or how about uh, uh, you know, I could uh, freshly, you know, maybe get them some some kind of futuristic equivalent of uh, a little baggie of peyote buttons. Um. <laughs> Well, you already got that liquor you make that gets got a hallucinogenic effect. But that's just a mild one. And peyote <laughs> is not mild. Well, it you don't is. you don't you don't have you don't have the mirage liquor in this game. No, I don't. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh... But I I created my own that has a slight hallucinogenic effect. That I would freely share with anybody, and, and if they, if he was asking me to fucking throw together some chemicals that would make him trip his balls off um, in the woods with his buddy, I mean, I would try to produce something for crystal him. Crystal meth, crystal meth. He's well, need crystal uh, meth. So, so, Gabe, tell me, what do you want the hallucinogens for? Oh, uh, it's fine. Never mind. Actually, it looks like you got it set up already. Well, the reason I ask is that. Um, so, uh, Bocephus, check out page 94 of the Central Supply Catalog, uh, update <coughs> 2023. And okay. look at Nervous Response Dampener. He said 94. Nervous Response Dampener. <sighs> Now, I don't think that that would be a sedative, but I, I was looking for sedatives, and I saw this, and I'm like, that might be something that you would want to research. I mean, it's only TL9. Yeah. So what this does, it's a, <laughs> in quotes, be... battlefield vitamin. Yeah. Um, it's a mild anti-anxiety drug helping users cope with the horrors of war taken a few hours before battle. The dampener lasts for about a day, granting the user a DM plus two to any checks related to avoiding fear or shock, including morale checks for 2D times three hours. That's I useful. think we both took that since we're going to go <laughs> hunt a baby brontosaurus. Yes. <laughs> and so they, so you guys are, uh, it, it is, Getting to be the the not quite nightfall, but the sun's going to be setting soon. You guys have made camp. You've got your hunting guide. He has supplied you guys with hunting rifles, um, which are also in the um, big game hunting rifles in the central supply catalog. Actually, I might have actually put it in. 
Oh, I did. Sure. Yes. So this is the big game hunting rifle that you have been supplied. And uh, he he kind of sitting around the campfire. He tells you that out in this region, there the two major um, he just calls them beasts. The two major beasts that are out here. The the first and most common is the gazelle, and it is an import. And gazelles look. Whoop, look like this. And they are basically like basically they are a cross between a gazelle and a a ram, but they're like the size of cows. And uh they're ornery and uh he says, you know, they're good eating if you want to shoot one. They 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 were imported and they just seem to propagate everywhere. So it's kind of an open season for gazals. And he said then the other one is the Corellan Larker. And that Oh. Um First I will just go ahead and in his information telling you about the gazals you get to see their stat block. Wow, those things are huge. Yeah, they're they're quite big. Like I said, they're imagine a a ram that's the size of a large bull and uh like a bovine bull, like a you know but has the the attitude of a mountain goat. And then the larker these things are like, they look kind of like, um, God, I have to like, shoot that more than once. Like a brontosaurus. <laughs> and he tells you that these things, um, they're, they're dumb. Um, they, you know, they're slow moving, I think. No, they're, well, they're, they're fast moving because of their size. Um, but he tells you that, you know, they're herbivores. <clears throat> they go around eating from the treetops. And he shows you their stat block. Now, of course... You have to hit that one definitely more than once. Yeah, Armor I mean... 12, can we even get through it? Right. So, he has set you up with... Uh, if, if, he had none of your big game rifles are loaded yet. He wants to know what you want to shoot. He can give you multiple mags. That's fine if you want to go after both. But there are standard rounds, and then there are um, there are explosive rounds. Or um, on here, specialized ammunition. I kind of want armored against. Armor twelve. I want a pe I want a penetrator. They actually make a bullet now called the penetrator. <laughs> yeah, I know they. Yes. <laughs> they're they're not regular bullets. They're machined. So he has he has AP five armor piercing rounds. If you want to go after the 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 Corell and Larkers. And. I think we ought to go after the smaller one first. If we, if they're available, if they're right around here, if we don't have to go too far. Well, uh, in the morning. What uh, about you, Jack? Would you have a, you have an opinion? No, it's your show. I'm just going along. You're my safety. Remember that. If I yeah. don't shoot well enough, you're supposed to fill me in. It's supposed to. So. <laughs> So in real real life, um, I'm a damn good shot. <laughs> I made California all state invitational competition. So the hunting guide in the morning, uh, you guys pack up some packs. He supplies you with 
a uh, and how many rounds does this have in it? Let's see. Let's do this again. Uh, it how many has rounds in mag? Five. Five, five in the mag. Three. So he gives you a mag of uh, the uh, AP five uh, rounds, and he gives you a standard mag. <clears throat> And so you can use whatever you want, but he he highly suggests using the um, the AP rounds uh, for the larkers. Um, and you can see over this this ridge, you can see the top of a head of a larker over here chewing on some trees. But he he comes up and he's kind of ducked down behind this tree, and he he holds his hand up to you know kind of tell you to slow down and be quiet. And he says, "Crikey, look!" There's a whole herd of them, and there's there is a small herd of Gazal here. You guys can move wherever you would like at this point. Um, Where can I pee? <laughs> well, there's a tree <laughs> right here. <laughs> right here. There's a rock over here. I'm going to move to You're here. camping, so pants are always an acceptable solution. I you should move to there and use the tree the as a and use the tree as a rest as okay. a meal. Make a uh, stealth plus dexterity check. Oh, that's bad. Minus three. <laughs> How how did it do that? Oh, I got a, still got an eight. Okay, well you are stealthy enough. Uh, where is my hazards? <clears throat> so what's funny? I was looking for stats in the larker, right? And I knew that I wanted it to have like around a hundred hits because the thing's massive, right? And I was like, God damn it, I'm gonna have to create this, and so. I'm scrolling up, <coughs> excuse me, to the animal section in the new core rulebook. And the first example that they have is the stat block for a larker, but they don't have a picture of it. They don't describe it or nothing. I'm like, well, that's kind of exactly what I was looking for. It's even an herbivore grazer. I'm like, huh. All right. Well, I guess that's what it is. Uh, here we go. Here is the gazelle. So. Jack, where would you like to set yourself up? I'll uh, sneak up next to him. Okay, go ahead and make a stealth plus dexterity check. Nice, you also made it. Okay. And just for... Chips and giggles. Oh, are you for... Fucking real. The, the hunting guide uh, kind of gets into a position with his big game rifle, and you hear a snap as he steps on a twig. And all of these gazals, uh, well, we will see. Look up. They have recon zero, so maybe not. Yeah, but they got. So oh, and they roll boxcars. All of their heads snap up, and they are looking around. Where'd that sound come from? They are all now on alert. Um, everybody. Uh, da, da, da. Roll initiative. So it's 2d6 plus your um, dexterity or um, int intellect. Or he gets a five. I Is got a nine. Oh no, he's got decks of twelve. That's wrong. Come My on. decks is zero. <laughs> DM zero. And that's with augmentation. <laughs> he's got a plus two, so he's actually got a six. No, oh, I got the hunting guy twice. Where is... 
chat. Randolph, sorry. So, Randolph, you got a, what, a nine? Yep. Okay. So, the hunting guide uh, <laughs> quietly whispers, says, Perky, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on that twig. I'm going to wait to take my shot until after both of you have your opportunity. So, oh, and I need to give these guys a turn. Do they have... They Man, do. these things are close. <laughs> unless the, unless that's a hundred meters this is between the two. They're close. <laughs> they got a whole terrifying three. So, Randolph, uh, you can pick a target and make your shot. Now, these guys do have armor plus two, but, um, I mean, this this rifle, it does pretty well. Okay, so uh, it's just... Uh, it would be... Hold on, let me get to it. Sl do I, is this... I include slug? DM? Yeah, it would be uh, combat slug uh, plus your dex modifier. And ten. Hold on. And I shoot the one to the far left, and he's close, man. So you're going for this guy. Yep. Okay. Uh, so a 10 is a hit. Uh, uh, so roll 3D plus 5 total for your damage. 15. Ooh. And he is going to... His armor is going to stop two of that. But he will take 13. And he's still up. Uh, like I said, the hunting guide uh, kind of motions for Jack to make his shot. Jack, what would you like to do? Uh, I'll shoot the same one, I guess. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Um, so before we do that, um, so this guy actually takes an additional two points of damage. I forgot. You guys get a plus two uh, to hit because they are large. So um, it is gun combat slug plus dexterity plus two. Hell. That would have given. So are you waiting on me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. And I'll shoot the uh, same one. Yeah, I'll shoot the same one. Okay. So then. Is that a plus three? So that? that is a plus three to damage. So it is 3D plus three six. six. 3D plus six. Okay, so he will... Armor will stop two of that. For 11. And then the hunting guide will make his shot. And he hit. And this guy goes down. Yes. We have steaks for the ship. <laughs> well, they just blew up our restaurant, so you better come back with some food. The we Gazal. Or oh, would you rather have ribs? How about a roast? The Gazal uh, are not going to be dumb. 
Uh, I mean, if they are uh, threatened or cornered, generally they will. They can do like a uh, trample or charge attack and using their horns. But with gunfire, these guys are not going to do that. They are going to bolt. Uh, this guy is off screen. That guy's off screen. This guy. Not quite. Uh... Whoa. It's a little further. I don't remember which one they are. I can still shoot him. Well, they are three, so... Oh, good. They're still in there. So, yeah. The, the, two of them take off and uh, bolt off into the wilderness. This one is lagging behind the other two. And, uh, I mean, you could move uh, Randolph and try to get another shot on him. Let's see, five meters. I'll put you right there. That rifle has a range. Two hundred. Yeah, so yeah, you you could hit him. Now here's a question. How much are we gonna lose on power from hitting him that far? Oh, I mean, the I the maximum range is two hundred meters, and this guy's like gonna be like fifteen away from you. So nothing. Yeah, it. I would. Yeah, I mean, you're you're not gonna have a problem with it. Is that far enough? Is that is that within range? Oh, I'm positive it is. I mean, yeah, that's only twenty meters. I mean, in my opinion, the big game hunting rifle should do 5D plus 3. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that should be a big game hunting rifle. But... Yeah, we need a pony gun. Range. We need a pony, pony gun. <laughs> we need a 20 millimeter pony gun. Uh, I mean, at 3D, I... at 3D plus 3, or let's see, yeah, 3D plus 3, I mean, to me, that's like a standard deer hunting rifle. That's not a big game hunting Rifle. That's a 308. Right, right. It's not a 35 mag or something like that. Well, yeah. I mean, your Gauss pistols do that, right? Gauss, a Paus, Gauss rifle will do 4D. Right, yeah, yeah. Gauss rifles and will do 4 And, and that's only shooting a 4 millimeter meters. round. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, their gun makes no sense. Plus, yeah. it's a very bulky. We're supposed to be strength 12 to even be carrying it. Well, bulky just means that it's exceptionally difficult to hide, but um, very bulky. I mean, you're n it's not like you're going to hide this thing under a trench coat or something like that. It is a massive yeah. gun. But I would still think that this should do 5D plus 3. That's so my I fire, opinion. And I get a 12. Ooh, hoo -hoo. So, no, he's still got a plus two. It's a large creature. Yeah, that is a that is going to be it's a, a it's a fourteen. Yeah, that's going to be a critical. Uh, roll a d six. A d six. Yeah, just one. One. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, out of curiosity, roll a 2D. Seven. Okay. Now go ahead and roll your damage. So let's see, 12, 13, 14... So that is going to be 3d plus 9 for damage. But your shot was so good, you may not really need it. Twenty-one. Yikes. <laughs> nice. And his yeah. armor his armor's gonna take two of that, so he takes nineteen. But um you 
clearly peg it in the head. And this gazelle uh, is now going to be moving at, uh, well, it would be half movement, but, uh, yeah, so he can only move three meters per round uh, with a minor action, and he is wobbly, um, and he loses right off the top. He's going to lose a leg. He loses one point from his. Well, if he was if he was a human, he'd lose one D off of his dex. I am going to say he's going to lose one D or, or one point off of an additional point off of his hits, and he is going to lose an additional one D hits per round as he wobbles around, bleeds out. Um, he has major brain damage. Uh, the hunting guide is going to move here, and he's going to take the aim at... Well, he can't do that. There. Just aim center of mass. Yeah, he can't do that there. Uh... We'll move up right here and wait for Jack to make his shot. Uh, Jack, you can go ahead and try to finish him off. The, the guide's like, "You got to, you got to end him. He, he's hurting. You can't leave a <laughs> an injured beast in the wild." So Jack, you can yeah. move five yeah. meter or move uh, six meters with your minor action, and then take a significant action to blast him. Okay. He was coming right for me. Did you see that? Yeah, I rolled a twelve. You also rolled a twelve. Oh shit. Well, total. So. I got. Oh, okay. 10 so plus twelve. Two. So that is a plus four to damage, giving you 3d plus seven for damage. Yikes. 20. And you drop him. Now, down here... I gotta check. Over for... here. Wow, these guys are fucking dumb. So these guys don't have um, heightened senses at all. And now I'm curious. Oh, but they heard it. And the herd of larkers go glumphing at max speed across the river and kind of take cover in these this copse of trees. Oh, so that means, gee, let's get real close to this thing before we shoot, because it's hiding in the trees. <laughs> I don't think so. Right. <laughs> so the 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 hunter, the the hunting guide, uh, his recommendation is is that uh, because it's going to take you guys, uh, you've got two of these things, and they're too big for you to drag back to the camp. So he recommends doing a field dressing, carving off what you need. He, of course, in his uh, backpack, has a little battery-powered portable seal meal kit where you can seal these things up and take back your stakes and, uh, and you know, do some more hunting tomorrow. But... Um, each of you, uh, so Randolph and Jack both roll 2d6. That's pretty good. Holy shit, Randolph. So, <laughs> Jack, you are able to carve off your, your, the, the hunting guide has a hands off kind of thing, but he does give you, um, instruction. 
Um, if you've never been out wild uh, game hunting or if you've never hunted gazelle, he tells you, you know, this is how you do it. This is where you're, you're going to cut the meat off. Um, Jack, you're able to get off seven steaks uh, that you can, that are sealed into a pouch. Uh, Randolph does really well, and he pulls off 11 steaks. Well, you see, that's because I pulled out my own fillet knife. Cause yes, I know how to fillet. you brought, you brought your... Uh, <laughs> He, he, Randolph brought a sword, and it's just like, <laughs> like he's in Brazil. Here, I'll just cut it off. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, you you guys have got your first... Actually, I could have used my blade. You you could have, yes. Yes, you That's could. That's like an Inca, Inca wooden... The, the hunting guy thinks it's a little weird that... On one side. Well, the hunting guy thought it was a little weird that Jack stripped down to his underwear before carving up the gazelle, but... You know, hey man, he he's not here to pass judgment. You do you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you guys get back to your camp and uh, and uh, I get can... eleven steaks. I'm gonna put it in my notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you put down eleven gazelle steaks. And so, you guys, uh, we will come back to you. Uh, meanwhile, in the Corolla Star Town, uh, Bocephus and George, you guys, you can, you know, as the, the think like uh, seeing, and I, I hate to use this, but I mean, it is the most visual thing that most of us can remember. The scene of the dust and chaos falling in New York when the Twin Towers were hit. That's what you're looking at in this area here uh of this street this this building just there that's the kind of chaos that you're saying i mean not to not to that extent because i mean obviously this building wasn't that big but uh people are screaming and running and um there's just seems complete pandemonium you don't really see um or you can't really tell if there's any um, officials or authority coming in at this point. You, of course, can imagine that there is. What now, do you mean, George, I will say. So, part well, of your standard I think the issue. First thing is, is that you're 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 the doctor, Bocephus. I think we need to let me lead the way, and we can go in there and see if anybody needs medical attention, clone or non-clone. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy to. Read and it then right. I can. I can kind of guard the door, and I can make sure that none of these protesters are going to pull anything else. Like, they're waiting for you to go into the building before they let bomb number two go off, right? Because people are like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, people good. suck. Yes. Wait for the first responders and blow the second bomb. Right. Yeah, yeah. people suck. <laughs> yeah, lead the way. Let's, let's go in. <laughs> That's who I learned from. So, <laughs> right. You, you learn the lessons the hard way, right? Oh, I had a good instructor, actually. He's an American uh, uh, Army Ranger. That'll do it. Yeah. So, That's pretty good. So my, my buddy was a, uh, was a Ranger over in Bosnia, and uh, he told this story. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, but it is, it is fucking funny. But, so he, they blew he, up his truck, too? Uh. No, 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 <laughs> no worse. So, uh, well, maybe how worse. How you hit a truck with a mortar? He rolled a 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. I mean, my, that's amazing. That's so good. <laughs> they were, they, he, he was, he was a ranger recon squad. They were, they were airdropping, um, dune buggies. And on the back of the dune buggy, there was a turret. <laughs> with a, a, basically a, a, a minigun. And so my buddy's sitting in the driver's seat and it, the, he tells me that he's got a guy and they're strapped in and on the back of this dune buggy, buggy is a parachute. And they weren't dropping from a, a huge height. But they get dropped and as they're coming down, the they look out and they can see that there is an enemy helicopter heading their way. And the guy in the turret is younger and newer than he was and turns the turret to shoot. And before my buddy could say, no, don't do that, the guy lets it rip and shoots through one of the parachute cords. 
And so yeah. now the parachute, it doesn't collapse, but it starts to twist. And they are spinning all the way down. And he said, miraculously, they hit the ground. The buggy kind of landed on its side and rolled and happened to roll over onto the wheels. And the guy in the turret had hunkered down and was throwing up all over himself because they were dizzy as shit. But he said, somehow we got through it. And he said, I just sat there for like five minutes because... I couldn't believe that we'd actually got through that. But yeah, yeah, that was his story. He's like, yeah, fuck that place. He also, well, there's a there's a sadder story that I, I won't tell that story. So, um, yeah. He had a lot of terrible stories about Bosnia, but anyways. So, uh, so yeah, so George, where are you... So this is the building with the... Uh, shit coming out of it which how do you where do you want to go and obviously both see if this is going to follow you I, I i mean i guess yeah i'm gonna follow him i'm i mean you know i'm i'm ready out I... well george, george you can decide which direction you want to go i'm sure you're going to uh zig and zag yeah i'm gonna zig and zag i'm also gonna actually uh you know, I'm assuming that I'm armed down here, right? So I can pull out my shotgun. It's it's a close range. Do you right? do you have a sidearm? Yeah, I've got two auto pistols in be in, in, tucked in between my duster because yeah. I'm cool like that. Yeah. So sidearms are are allowed. Um, blades, of course, are allowed. Um, shotguns in the city center, probably not so much. But they're not going to balk at a sidearm, um, especially. I don't want to say that you guys are military, but I mean, you're kind of that this exploration mission kind of borders on that, especially your division kind of border. It really rides that line of, of are you or aren't you? And so you guys are granted the ability, the, you can, you can wear cloth armor as long as it's not obvious. So like your duster is perfectly acceptable. Um, and you can carry sidearms and blades. Okay, that's perfect. I'm going to pull out the uh, bolt pistols. I'm going to kind of guide so Bohevis can get to inside the building to check out the wounded. I'm going to keep an eye on any more of these little protesters because no one likes protesters. They all right, suck. Right, no, no, protesters one suck. Wrong, one wrong move out of any of them, or I see a weapon of any kind, and I'm not going to ask questions. I'll just shoot them. You're going to go full American on them? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did do a lot of my work with Americans, so, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. so you're well practiced. I don't huh? recognize that guy in my driveway. I better shoot. So you can move with three yeah, minor actions. Through, you can move yeah, eighteen meters. Canadian, I guess that, that's what yes. it makes, right? Because that's I was, rare. Well, I was going to say, if you were in the military, you traveled around the world teaching people the. But I'm going to the I'm usage sorry. of a. <laughs> no, I'm just going to apologize for everything I do. <laughs> yes, I apologize. <laughs> yes, this I'm is the proper way to use I'm A, sorry. and I apologize. Right now, that's not my fault. That's yours, but I'm still sorry. <laughs> yes. as, as we're moving that way, I'll be like, you know, George. Now, if you shoot some people, I can save them, and that'll that'll make me look more of a hero. Well, I'll shoot him in the leg then. It's pretty no, much shoot him in the face. These hands are magical. I'll take care of. Them. <laughs> you just yeah. want more DNA. You know what? Do I'm your, do your fins have hands? Look, I'm not I'm not an educated guy. I got like a five education here, so <laughs> he's he's much more educated than I am. Whether whether I have a higher intellect or not doesn't matter to George, but he's got a higher education, which in my eyes makes him smarter. So, so so you can. Right. I'm just gonna. That's right, but see, I'll just shoot him in the face. I can do that. <laughs> you can move with one minor action. Uh, you can move six meters. Uh, you can do three minor actions, which means you cannot. That's your whole turn, and you can move eighteen. So you can move your your token up to. you. I mean, you can get all the way up there. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, I can get up there. I'll. Uh... So that would be two minor actions, and then you could use that third minor action if you wanted to, 
Uh, did you some like action? I drew weapons though too, right? So I draw weapons. Oh, that's true. So there's that's a minor great. action. Okay. I drew my weapons. Two minor actions. That's the end of my move. I'm going to make sure I'm shielding Bohifas so he can get up there and he can rescue some people and look like a hero. And maybe in the chance that I might be able to shoot a protester. Okay. So Bocephus, uh, you still have, I don't know, are you, are you pulling out any weapons, uh, Bocephus, or are you just rushing in with your med kit? Just going to go on in there with my med kit. And I'm going to trust fucking George to have fun. Okay. So we're going to put you kind of in the building. Uh, is there a, let's yeah. save some people and be heroes. Yeah. There's be no big money. damn heroes. There's no, there's yeah, I'll no be like, yeah, I'll I'll call out, you know. I'll be we'll like, give you you the, know, I'm a doctor, call out. We'll give you the little flag icon to show that you are in uh, the building. So, but see, so George, you pull out your auto pistols, and you're you're kind of standing there, uh, you know, trying to eyeball these guys through the smoke and debris that is has now filled this little square, and. Uh, Bocephus, you get into this club and it is just massive carnage. Um, there is multiple dead bodies, obviously dead bodies, splattered on the walls and everything else. You see that there are a number of people that are laid out on the floor. There are groans and moans coming from everywhere, the occasional scream. Um, and you can go ahead and get to work. Um, go to the kitchen. <laughs> Are the are you guys still are you guys still cooking back? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there will, will be some food there. I mean, you know, they might have some of the today's special spilt over, maybe a bowl or something. I could just scoop, get a sip, and you know, plug you a hole or two. Sample. Yeah. Well, no, really, no. I, I, seriously, I'm just the first person I find that's living. I'm gonna try to render them aid. Okay, go ahead and make a uh, medic plus uh, education check. All right. So this will be plus five. Okay. Eleven. Huh. So go ahead and roll two d six. Just flat two d six. Yep. Six. Hmm. So you are able to. Uh, you find this guy, and uh, it is one of the doormen, <clears throat> and it looks to you like this, whatever this was, was probably a homemade pipe bomb filled with ball bearings, um, oh. and the guy has been peppered with shrapnel, and he's one of the lucky ones, and uh, you are able to patch him up, uh, well, mostly... Um, Let's say you got an 11. So he's going to be able to throw uh, three onto his um, onto his wound rating. He is still going to need extensive surgery to get all these ball bearings out of him. But he's, like I said, he's one of the lucky ones. Yeah, I will, uh, you know, if, if, he, if he's, you know, somewhat stable, I will just move immediately to the next person. I will, you know. I'll mark him if there's some tags of some sort, you know. I'll, I'll. He's got a red marker. Puts an X on the guy's forehead. Well, yeah. no, 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 no. The X Next. people are gonna die, and, and the, the red people are either people that I think are really gonna die, no matter what the fuck I do, or dead people. And then uh, the yellow people, uh, you know, the yellow tag represent people that I can help. Uh, maybe I should request that they get sent to the. To the deep night revelation, and then the green people. Well, I'll give them placebos. Okay. They're not really that hurt. They got a little thing. So here, they're take taking taking an aspirin and and yeah, call me in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, and and I've got this image of your doctor running. He doesn't have markers for triage. He's actually got like the ear tags that they do for wildlife. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Good joke, and there's like this big tag sticking off their ear. Heck, their ears just like going out. <laughs> uh, maybe toe tags. To you know? uh, yeah, toe tags work. Assuming yeah. they have toes. Um, Take your foot off. So, lay it on their chest. George, make a uh, recon plus intellect check. Absolutely. 
Oh, crap. That's a three and a two, so that's only going to be a ten this time. Only. So, with a ten, <laughs> you notice that there is some movement out here. Um, you see this guy, an activist over here, uh, bring out from under his coat, he has what would be... Are these even in here anymore? Uh, hold on. I guess I don't call them coach guns anymore. It is a sawed-off shotgun. <clears throat> oh, bows aren't allowed. That guy's going to have to get shot. In the <laughs> yeah, we can't have that. Uh, and Actually, how many stakes do I get from They the are not allowed at this, at this law level. They're <laughs> definitely illegal. He said he was a little overweight. You could probably get... Uh, you have to break 11 stakes? 1d6 steaks, maybe I'll get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might get some steaks. And I will throw both of you. Maybe. Both of you. So how are you doing initiative again? Just uh... I am. So uh, initiative, don't worry about the effect. Just roll 2d, add your dex or intellect your choice, and that is the total is your initiative. That sucks. I don't know. Ten's not too bad. Um, let's see. That was both Cephas. That's not good. Uh, wait. Oh, all my man. great rolls are gone now. Now it's all twos and threes. A nine is a plus one. So he gets a nine. And the clones, who are sevens across the board, because they're that generic, get safe. I assume the clones are going to leave. Uh, probably. Um, so this act, or, so both Cephas, go ahead and make another medic plus, uh, education check. So this time, uh, but see if you come up and you find a clone that has been uh, blasted, and I I'm going to roll two d six on this guy. Oh yeah, they got the laser sights on these things, don't they? So this guy, uh, his leg is. It's done. Like, you can give him first aid, but he is not going to have a leg after this. And oh, he's a clone. You know, yeah, I'm fine with him not having a leg. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you know what you call you. You know, you know where you find a dog with no legs. Nothing. He doesn't come anyways. Well, no. Uh, I just exactly <laughs> left he's got no legs. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, but I'm still trying to save his life. I, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what I think, you know, anybody would do. I'll, I'll try to tourniquet that wound off on the highest leg as he can, you know, to prevent further bleeding, and you know, maybe shoot him with a little morphine, and I'll tell him a wonderful story, you know, about snails. You know, dripping so, down his tongue. Go ahead and make you know, your go ahead and make your medic plus education check. But as you're working on him, he kind of reaches up at, with a bloody hand and grabs your collar, and he says, um, uh, "Don't waste your time on me. I'm just a clone." Oh well, you know. Would clones clones have rights too? I guess I don't know. No, they don't hear. Yeah. Yeah, every every sperm is sacred, son. I've got to save you. Every clone is real. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you. What you, I'm thinking is that uh, we you 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 turn to kiss his leg, and they're gonna kill him anyway. <laughs> well, I don't that's, know. Maybe. That's not my concern. Is I'm just I'm providing aid and a first that's, come first serve. Good doctor, there, Jesus. Yeah. So that's, you that's do no doing. harm, do no harm. You uh, tourniquet his leg, and I mean, he tells you, uh, you know, save somebody else, and uh, and he even tells you, he says, I know that I'm I'm going to lose the leg, and that I'm I'm useless. 
But you? Oh no, no, you'll have the other. You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not going to be winning any ass kicking contests, uh, but man, you, know. you will be an excellent hopscotch player by the time <laughs> this is all said and done. <laughs> Look on the bright side. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're good, man. This is the greatest thing ever happened to you. The cybernetics cool. for clones, is they just replace his, his lost leg with, like, a toilet plunger. You know? you know, there's a lot of parts around here. Is there another clone that, that I could, like, chop a leg off and, like, toss it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all genetically the same, right? Yeah, you don't so have to I mean, worry about I mean, rejection. I mean, the same. I mean, if I just <laughs> grab a leg off a neighboring clone that's dead. I, I don't think you're going to be doing that kind of surgery in a blown up bar, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah. hey, I will. But, I but, will roll know, the dice on it. Oh my god, you guys! Shot. You guys you fucking kill me. Chop the leg off at the hip and, this, and give him surgery on the ship. No, I could do it here. So, <laughs> so yeah, you you were able to get him. Uh, so, you know, tourniquet and uh, patched up enough that, uh, I mean, but there's, there's no hope. He's going to lose that leg. Um, so, outside, George, you see uh, Captain Dickhead here with a sawed-off shotgun. Uh... Boy. He... Gonna Looks move. Like he's within ten meters. Five meters, or well, he's yeah. That that's close enough. He's got a range of ten. Yeah, and he is gonna shoot at George. He's gonna shoot who? He's gonna shoot at George McDuff. You see, wow. he saw you guys going in there. He he ain't no dummy, and uh, and that's kind of why he was positioned where he was. Uh, and it, he's an activist, so he has zero for gun combat, but he does have a plus one to his decks, so, and he hits with a plus one to damage. Blah. You can, you can use your reaction to die. You could use your reaction. Nope. I'm going to take this because I think I can. Okay. Okay. 17. So what kind of uh, armor? Your cloth? I've got cloth armor, so I can take literally, actually, I can take a total of 11 of that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Puts it 6, 6 damage? Yeah. So, wait, what's, what's your armor? Well, I've got cloth armor for 8. And I also have subdermal armor for three. Nice. So yeah, you take six. Well, you know what? That hurts. And I got some bad fleshy wounds here. But I, I want to return the favor. Yeah, it is your turn. And the, the you he blasts you with one of the barrels. And uh, you don't go down. You kind of take it. And turn and look at him like you're the fucking Terminator. And, uh, you're going to shove yeah, a grenade. Yeah, you, you kind of are. <laughs> You've got <laughs> enough cybernetic implants. And you kind of look at the guy, and the guy's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's now got two laser sights on him. So you're, are weapons. you going to go full John Woo? Is that your plan with two weapons? or? Well, he shot me, and that wasn't really nice. Now he needs to get one in the face. So I'm going to shoot him with both. Okay. I know I'm at minus two. Yep, you are at minus. Well, hold on. So that's okay though because I have slug two. I have laser sights that give me plus one. I have my dexterity that gives me plus one. So I'm still at plus two. Okay, there you go. So yeah, yeah you I get. I try to even it out. You get two attacks. Two. Yeah. Okay, that's an eleven. That is a hit. Uh, there. with plus so three damage. 11, yeah, plus... Actually, 11 plus two is 13. Oh. Oh, no, wait a minute. I do have plus two. That's a six. Plus two is eight. Okay, so how much damage did you do on the first one? 
You know, I'm still going to shoot him with the second one regardless. Well, I, I figured. I just Because I'm, that's just what I do. Okay, 662. So that's 13. Are you counting the um, plus 5? So that's going to be 14, 19 points. Okay. Oh, minus 3. Uh, sorry, 16. 16. I don't know about you, but I don't want to take 16 points when I'm unarmored. Which leaves him... Wow. Uh, so you blast this guy, um, and you drill him with both guns. Um, well, I only hit him with... That's only for the one. That was just one gun? That oh. was just one gun. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, oh, that's too bad. What'd you, what'd you get with the second gun? Uh, so nine, and I have no, I just got eight, so nine minus three, I only got six on the, on the second one. Okay, so that, the second gun is a miss, but still, the first gun... No, 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 that's with the that's first, the that's damage. damage. Oh, that's damage? Yeah. Fuck, okay. Uh, I would say six damage. So six, he's, six... He's laying on the ground bleeding. Yeah, six damage. So points altogether. One. Suck it. Minus five. He is <clears throat> down and unconscious. Uh, roll a d6. Actually, roll a d6 two times. So what's your first one? Well, I got opposites. I got a one and a six. Holy shit. So I your, rolled the one first. So your first shot hits him in the head. The second shot hits him in the leg. Uh... Roll 2d6. Six. six. Two threes. Uh, will die unless given prompt medical attention and suffer permanent effects if they survive at all. Losing 1d from any one of strength, dex, or endurance, and d3 from all others. Well, he shot me, so I'm going to go stomp on him on the face. <laughs> yeah, he's down and unconscious. Uh, the clones <clears throat> are kind of panicking. This clone is going to run... Oh, wait. I'm not on the clones yet. Uh, this guy is going to move here, and he takes a clone hostage. Does he have a firearm? He does. He has another sawed-off shotgun. This clone oh, is guys shotguns. running the F away. Uh, this clone is running the F away. Run away! This guy... I assume he gets hostage. Yeah, he's going to take a hostage as well. And he's going to use him as a body shield. Because, you know, they're activists trying to free the clones. This guy <laughs> comes up. I got that. Here. I got that impression. And we will come back to you. That is not good looking good, George. Oh, That's we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. George is, is going to run out and give these guys joy juice. George is dual wielding <laughs> like he's in a, a in a, a John Woo movie, like he's in the Matrix. He, You guys are fine. No, fine. I'm shooting it like a regular person. I don't do the whole John Woo stuff. I just point and shoot. <laughs> are you going to hold it sideways and go for the kill shot? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Guys, you do that are idiots. They get that ejector right They need to study how to shoot, man. I've seen that happen to a lot of idiots who think they can shoot with their left hand and they point it sideways. Right. And they yeah. got hot brass right in their eye. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's that. Yes. Yes. Right? <laughs> That's a good point. It's really kind of discerning what you've done here. You've put a, a one of the lurkers in an initiative order. Mm-hmm. Well, that's oh. that's what you guys are going to be going up at next. So then, so you guys, um, 
here's my question for Randolph and Jack. Are you going to eat a steak tonight? And are oh, you going to yes. share with your hunting guide? Oh, yeah. I am. You so, want, want a steak, Jack? I'm, I got hit with I a got, shotgun. I, I got want you to drop me back one, too. Oh, I'm good. So, Are Randolph, you, you can... MRE? <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want? The green hamburger? MRE. <laughs> yeah, you want the green hamburger one from Burger King that's been in the span for six, mo- for six years? Yeah. Have you ever had one of those? Uh, hamburger MREs? No. Yeah. They used to have hamburger MREs. We had them in the underground facility I worked at. Oh, I've had the four fingers of... I, I, actually, I don't think I've ever even had the four fingers of death, but... Any any of you guys ever played uh, MechWarrior? Yeah. So, uh, I was... A little bit. I was huge into MechWarrior back in the late 80s through early to mid 90s, and at... Uh, I played with a group that had, uh, literally, in players, we had a full company. So there was... What? 400. No, there was, uh, there's five, there's five players per lance. Probably at least 30 players, and we would, we would rent a big conference room every week over at a local hotel. And, um... The DM, the, the or the game master, um, he he had some issues. Um, so <laughs> he uh, had been around. He he was he was in Nam. He had been around and he had seen some shit and done some things. And uh, he's a little on edge. <laughs> and uh, we uh, one of the things that we ran into is that we found a um, a Star League cache. And in the Star League cache, they had these uh, st- standard issue for the Star League old tech pulse laser rifles. And the cool thing about these laser rifles, they, they basically had everything in the rifle. In the stock of the rifle, the back would open up, and there was a survival kit in there, including uh, rations. And so we find these, and we open them up, and one guy opened it up, and he's like, hey, there's still rations in here. And then he fucking eats it. And these things are like, what, 2,000 years old? 3,000 years old? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the the Game Master had a whole lot of fun going through describing um, how bad old MREs are or can be. And you're going to have to make some survival checks, son. Because <laughs> you're going to have some gastrointestinal issues. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, yes. So, uh, you guys wake up the next morning, and uh, you're you're having your your steaks or leftover steaks from last night around the campfire. And the hunting guide thanks Randolph for sharing with him as as uh, Jack um, scrambles down some Emery lasagna, which is mostly made of soy paste with um, lasagna flavoring in it. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a top ramen packet, but mostly just soy paste. And um, and he says, "Okay, so today we're going to go across that river, and we're going to sneak up on that herd of of larkers." Are you guys game, or do you want to head back? Uh, is are the larkers still in these trees? Yeah, they're over here, kind of they. They are over here, kind of parked out, uh, munching on these trees. Now that things have quieted down, they're, they're much happier. Or they think they're happier, and they are... Like I said, larkers, they're big, but they're not real bright. So, Gabriel, yeah. do you think this is a good idea to go across over there and shoot these things while they're in the bush? That's what you came out to do. <laughs> it's got to uh, be some challenge to him. All right, let's go. All right. So uh, let me see. What's he gonna? He. You no, know, I 
think I can shoot that one from across the river. <laughs> you might. Well, there's this rock in your way. Yeah, they're only 40 meters away. That, well, yeah, and I mean, you would be able to see the the <clears throat> top of his neck and uh, head over the river. I mean, I guess you don't necessarily have to cross the river. The hunting guide, uh, he crosses over the river and gets like. Uh, but he's hunkered down over here. So you guys can move wherever you would like to set yourselves up for your next shot. And I assume you're going to use the AP5 rounds. Since these guys... Or, no, I'm sorry. AP6. They're AP6 armor-piercing rounds. And uh, these guys have armor 12. So... <laughs> And these things can move nine meters a turn. Yes. Yeah, they can. They can flat move. But I mean, you'd be able to flat move too if you had legs that long. Not so much that they move fast; they just simply cover larger amounts of space. Okay. Which ones can can the guide see? The one over here on the far right, behind the rock. Uh, he can see the top of its, or the middle of its neck and head. He can see this one, though. It's probably going to take concerted fire from all three of you to bring one down. No kidding. Which is... If I can... I'm moving to... Come on, my computer's not 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 working quite right. No, oh, I have those days. Trust me. My uh, so I used to run a Saturday night uh game in addition to my Saturday afternoon game, and uh, one of my players he called me up and he's like, "Hey, what kind of video card do you have?" And I said, "I have a." You know, uh, an old GTX 970, which I haven't had any problems with. It's a great card. He goes, well, I've got this. I was going through my closet, and I've got all these old tech parts. Do you want a uh, Radeon Vega 56 8 gigabyte card? And I'm like, fuck yes, I do. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so he gives it to me, and I have the I I built this case specifically for picking it up and taking it to lands, and it's this really small case. It's a Thermal Take Core V1. And I go to put this Vega 56 in, and its ass is about a half inch too wide and about an inch and a half too long. It would not fit in the case. I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. So I had so to order... Part out the drum and make the case bigger. Uh, I almost did that. I almost <laughs> did that. I'm like, I'll just make this motherfucker fit. No, no, I, I didn't end up doing that, but I, I just ordered uh, the one size big... Same case, one size bigger, the Core V21, and threw that thing in there, and I've been game with that. And, oh my god, it's awesome. We've been playing Elite Dangerous, and oh my god, planets look Amazing. We're uh, we're we're doing. Uh, I don't know if anybody plays Elite, but we're doing um, Thargoid uh, missions, the alien anti Xeno missions, and it's absolutely crazy. So we Randolph and Jack on. and this Took guy. A turn, I think, to go that far. He made it. Jack and Randolph, go ahead and make your. Stealth plus dex checks. I think Jack got the best spot. Yeah. Jack got an 11. That's good. Stealth plus... Stealth plus what? Uh, uh, stealth plus dex. I got a nine. I got 12 <laughs> minus three. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay. But that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh. Jack, what'd you get for initiative? Did you guys roll in this yet? Yes. No. Yeah, b both uh, Jack and Randolph roll initiative. I'm sorry. Got my rolls mixed up. There you go. Four. Oof. Well, at least you're kind of hidden. In theory. That's why I wanted to be kind of behind the rock. So once again, and he, nothing he, else I can run around the other side of the rock. You guys have calm dots, and uh, the the uh, hunting guide uh, whispers into his calm dot that he will wait until you guys uh, both make your shots before he does anything. And so, Jack, what would you like to do? I'm gonna hold action until after Randolph shoots. Okay. We haven't made any noises, and we passed the stealth check, so what's the lurker going to do? The lurkers are chewing on trees. Randolph, what would you like to do? I'm going to shoot right at his head. <laughs> if you want to make a cold shot, um, you can. It is minus four to your attack. Shit. <laughs> but you've already moved, so... You can yeah, I move this. I move <clears throat> eighteen meters. Yeah, it's but this this is a whole new round, so you can use a minor action to aim, which gives you a plus one. So that drops that, that to a minus three. And then I have slug one, which gives it minus two. And then the thing is large. What's your dex? DM zero. Ugh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ultimately, you're at minus two. That, that's the net result. If you want to do a call shot. Or you can just make a shot. I'll just make a shot. Is there any... It, the range isn't that far. Do I get anything extra for the range? Let's see here. What is your range? Jesus. Uh, I mean, we'll call it 16 meters just to make it round up. Um, with a range of 200, I would say, yeah, I'll give you plus two to range. I get a 10. Okay. So you get a plus two to damage, and you ignore six points of armor. Oh, I more the, ignore the armor? Well, before you roll damage, roll a d6. Yeah, you hit him in his torso. So now go ahead and roll. Let's see. So, so 3D plus 5 for damage. 22. That's almost as much as you can get. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so... So he's got a hundred. He's got a hundred hit points. Yeah, <laughs> he'll take sixteen. <laughs> Jack, you can make your shot. All right, I do want to make a called shot for the head. Okay, so you're at minus four. Okay. So I have a dex of ten. Okay. Uh, nope. No! Oh, Jack shot goes a little wild. Hunting guide is going to go ahead and make his shot. Are you fucking kidding me? His gun jams. <laughs> and he's sitting there cussing, trying to unjam his rifle. Now that lurk's going to wake up. Uh, he goes, so he spends <laughs> he spends his significant action unjamming his rifle. Uh, Jack, what would you like to do? You get another shot. Uh, do it again. There we go. 
Oh shit! Another Say six. It again. Fuck. Jack misses again. You so Jack is realizing he's like this gun is pulling to the right. <laughs> like I don't <laughs> think the scope's quite on. Three clicks of left on the thro on the scope. Right. Yes. The lurker. Uh, the lurkers are going to be shit in their pants at this point, and so. This Larker is going to Oh yeah, he can totally do that. He bolts this way and charges the uh your um your hunting guide. Time to go in the river, dude. Go for a swim. So he plus four to his back. I assume he uses a reaction. Yeah. That's going to hit. Minus his athletic. No. He is only he's going to get hit for one point or plus one damage. Which is better than plus three damage. Oof. I don't know if he's gonna survive this. He's dead. Shit, he is. You see this larker just trample the shit out of your hunting guide. He just runs right over the top of him. And probably keeps going. He's got another, like, nine meters limit. This guy's just running this way. Just tramples the shit out of the hunting guide. Like, he might have stopped for one, one or two meters worth to grind his skull into the dirt and then keep running. Uh, this guy, he doesn't have anybody that he can really trample or run towards. He's like noping out. And this guy who has been shot is only going to move nine meters and he crosses the river. Um... His torso is bleeding and hurting. Randolph, what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm going to shoot that one. The one you just had. All right. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> five, I missed. Ah, you missed. Okay. Jack, what would you like to do? Uh, was anybody carrying a med kit? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah the, there, there's a med kit uh, that the uh, hunting guide was carrying. I, I don't know. I okay. also, Randolph? I have, a, I have a first aid kit and a survival kit. Okay. But the survival kit's always obviously back at the tent. The hunting guide's bleeding profusely from the head. You better tie a tourniquet around his neck. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, I just want to run towards him on kind of a funky path here. Okay. There's like five. Yeah, the, the hunting guy eight, just had some really... Yeah, you can move 18. Okay. Yeah, the hunting guy just had some bad rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and that's how fast you can die with bad rolls. So that's about where I make it to with 18. Okay. All right. The Larker He's able to get away. 
Uh, which puts you guys out of initiative. And so, uh, oh, wait, no, there, it, that was dumb. That was dumb, 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 dumb. The one to the north got away. Yeah, the one to the north got away. Uh, fuck it. Uh, you guys can roll initiative again. Maybe you'll do better. Six. Eight. Actually, that came out about the same. Okay. So, Jack, um, what would you like to do? I'm going to try and cross this little stream right here. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Your choice. You can make an athletics dex <clears throat> or an athletics strength check. Okay. Because this is a deeper so. portion of the river at, depicted by its width. Oh, okay. And it's color. I think I got a zero in athletics anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you get across. Dex is an eight, so. Yeah, you you can cross. All right. That's a funny yeah. looking root yeah. beer you got there, Chris. Yes, yeah, it's a really good root beer. It is an Apocalypse IPA. Ten barrel uh, brewing. Let me see. Do I have enough left to make a... It's kind of on the border. Do I have enough left to make a med check? I would say yes. Go ahead and make your... Um, yeah, I'm not going to count your your crossing of the river. Go ahead and make your uh, okay. medical plus um, your choice, either intellect or education. Okay. Since this is, this is just first nice. aid, right? Yeah. That's a damn good roll. Yeah. So, um, the unfortunate thing is, is that this guy is way fucking dead. Like, oh. he, he's just absolutely right. crushed. Um, right. you, you give him the once over with, the, with your, with your first aid kit and you're like, uh, all three lines are flat. Like, I'm not getting mm. anything. All right. And when I pick him up, he's like a jello mold. Yeah. Um Now the larker. Well, now he's going to run away. So, you guys are out of combat. Uh your guide is dead. Um now when you came into the camp, uh, you hiked in here uh, about two miles on foot, but two miles back there is an air raft that you can take back to uh, the Star Town, back to civilization. I suppose we can bring the air raft back and pick up a body. You could do that. Yeah, is that what your uh, is is your plan? Do does either one of you have flyer graph? I do. <laughs> I'm the driver, remember? <laughs> no, I don't have. I have flyer graph zero. There you go. Perfect. So I mean, you know, it that could be worse. Oh, um, uh, yeah. You guys drag the body over here to the camp and kind of cover him up with a. Tarp and <laughs> all right, we'll be well, back for you. Hope the hope the gazals don't come and eat you, <laughs> or something else. I mean, who knows what else is out here? It is a a, a two <laughs> two thirds of the planet is a wildlife preserve. Who knows what could happen? Uh, there may be a predator out here. There there might be a couple of predators or a scavenger. out here. Scavenger. <laughs> yes. Yes. And all right. Pieces. Does he like to scam? Yeah, Bocephus is definitely a sexual predator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
All right, so we will pick up with uh, George and Bocephus in town uh, dealing with uh, activists and uh, explosive victims next week at 7 o'clock on Friday night. But I do want to hear George's uh, st traveler story about splitting the party. So they're on Colony 6. I kinda, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been there I many think, times. Uh, I kind of do. I, I kind of change the little things, too. So I had Jedico make a high port there. Yep. It kind of offset it. And then Jedico was supposed to be behind um, some raiding attacks at the gas giant to force people to come to the high port to fill up with fuel, right? So they could get the abnormous raids. Well, yeah. And I mean, Colony 6 is a great spot because that's like a meeting place for all the mercenaries that are coming in and out of the Glorious Empire. It's a fucking it wonderful kind of place. Perfect. It was a perfect yeah. setup for it. Yeah, it's a wonderful place. So, you know, I had the Duchess of Akis there who was meeting with um, Jedico to kind of make an arrangement for a high port of Atkis as well, too, to get rid of some of the low port. And, you know, and basically the doctor, who would be Posephus, ended up going to sleep with the Duchess, ended up in bed with her, uh, three of the guys killed a couple Jedico agents on a on a oh fuck on a high port, <laughs> so they were trying to get away. So they got they contacted the traveler nudes nudes agent service guy, uh, Brock Richardson, and they got a job. Oh, they actually rescued a ship on the way in. By the way, or actually stopped it from getting too much damage because these guys don't take anything; they just damage ships. So they actually escaped on that ship. So the doctor takes off on the Dutch's luxury liner. I got three of the crew on the ship that they saved, and then I've got the captain of our, like their ship who manages to get a distraction from one of their NPCs. So I got them on three different ships. Oh, and shit. Like, Where are you guys going? Did you guys even think to meet? I well, think I, I just use my comms. I'm like, that's your personal comm. It doesn't work when the starship's a right, thousand kilometers right. away, you dumb fuck. Right, <laughs> yeah. Like, like a mobile comm only has a, a five-kilometer radius. It's just like really. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think I saw one of your players actually post something about that, and uh, yeah, um, that's that's fucking awesome. Um, that would have been Adam. He was just like, "What the fuck is going on?" Right. Yeah. Now, now here's something for you. Have Have you looked at the robot handbook? Uh. Look in the clones section. This one here. Yeah, that one right there. Uh, yeah, look in the it. yeah about the about the uh, Jadeco assassin clones. They're yeah yeah they're essentially the exact same model as the Black Widows on Thief. Well, they have one of those called Earl McGrath that's chasing them down. Oh. They know about right because they actually harbored they what their engineer of their ship actually has a daughter on board their ship. She's the one who created the distraction. That she took the daughter away from the abusive husband, but the daughter's a rich baron. I have so many political crap that's going on and things that. that just, yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, my. There's a lot. It's Traveler, right? Dude, my, my, my Pirates of Drynax campaign is like spinning plates on top of plates on top of plates while trying to juggle with my feet because there's all these subplots that are constantly happening and i have to kind they of even done any of the part they're so off course of pirates of dragon <laughs> yeah they there's times the yeah that's it yeah mine will go way off course and then come back you know or or give me an opportunity to kind of rein them in you know kind of okay we're gonna do this there's... now but yeah no i hear you and, and this campaign is going to end up being very similar um well, it's not going to have all the political. In well, they could have some political intrigue. Now that I think. I mean, there is, there is some intrigue brewing. So, um, but yeah, we'll pick up on this next week at seven o'clock yeah. at Friday night. You betcha. Okay, thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Have a good night, guys. Yeah, you too, man. Uh, we'll right exit out of here again. Should probably just leave.